Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, welcome to this week's Goddess Energy Forecast. This is your girl, Abigail Mensabunsu, and happy Monday. Happy Monday. So, this week, just tuning into the energy, we're just looking at the week. We're going to be working with the full moon in Pisces. So, this week's energy feels very watery to me, and it's very interesting how my week started. Um, and what came up yesterday. So I wonder if that is the theme that we're gonna be playing with. But then again, we're working with the full moon, so this likely, most likely things that will be coming up for us to release with the full moon, which is a good thing, right? We, we want things to come up so that we can release it once and for all. So one thing that came up was the energy of resistance. What are you resisting in your life? And how is it showing up in your physical body? So I share, I shared this this morning with my Facebook um, group, and I was talking about how I was really feeling like this, having this cramping, um, in like on the right side of my hips, and I kind of checked in with myself as I was moving my hips around, and what came in was resistance, and the resistance was about um, whether or not. I was ready to take on the opportunities that continue to flow to me, whether or not if I was ready, right? And I was invited to go visit water. So yesterday, my family and I went to the river and I found a rock in the middle of the river and I sat on the rock with my feet in the water and immediately that cramp and feeling dissipated it went away completely it hasn't come back since and i'm so grateful for that but i know that this happened because i checked in with myself to see what that cramp had meant and for me it came up as resistance and then in order to move away from resistance the element that came to assist me was the element of water which the full moon is in pisces this week pisces is in the element of water and the gift that water gave me was flow. So moving, basically I moved from resistance into flow. And that is the message that I want to share with you guys for this week. How are you resisting your flow? Earlier um, in the week, I also shared a different story about a father and a, and a daughter playing in their garden. And as the, the, the father was working on the garden, the daughter was like, dad, dad. And the father was like, hi, what's up? And the daughter was like, the, the water is not coming out of the hose. There's no water coming out. The, the father looked over and her feet was on the hose, which was blocking the water flow from coming out. And so the dad told the daughter, why don't you take your feet off the hose and the water will flow again? So she did that and the water flowed. And so he went back to working on the, and in the garden. And then he heard again, dad, dad, the water stopped again. He looked over and the same thing, her feet was on the hose. So he told her again, you have to not step on the hose so that the water can flow to you. Now this story is really showing how we resist and how our resistance create blockages in the flow. Life is always flowing to our advantage. Life is always flowing to us. Our intentions are always flowing to us. The universe is always flowing to us. But we get to control whether or not that flow happens, right? So it's the same thing. Do you have your feet on the hose? And are you looking outside of yourself saying, Things are not flowing to me. Things are not happening to me. And if so, this week, you're being invited to take notice of how you restrict yourself, how you contract out of fear of expansion, how you stop the flow of life, the flow of blessings, the flow of miracles, the flow of abundance into your life. I want you to really go there. You will be, I mean, we're working with the, the water sign Pisces, so we're going to be going deep. 
into how we restrict ourselves, how we contract ourselves out of fear of expansion. We're being invited to expand this week. In what ways are you being expanded? Are you being invited to expand? And it is okay to experience those fears and those contractions as they come. But the goal is not to get stuck in those contractions, but to see it, right? To acknowledge it and then call in something better. Acknowledge it, release it, call in something better. Work with the full moon this way. So take notice as the emotions come up, right? Notice within, there's a correlation between the emotions and our physical body this week. So really pay attention. You know, mine didn't come out immediately as restriction, right? It came out as cramping, which I knew is a contraction. So where am I resisting? Where am I contracting when I'm being invited to expand and, and, and enjoy more of life? So pay attention to your body. Go into your body first. Where am I not feeling good? Where am I feeling tightness? Where am I feeling achy? Where am I feeling um, contracted? Where am I feeling stiff? And then go into that area and ask, what is this about? So move that area. If it is your shoulders, just move that area and check in. Why are you so tight? What is going on? Why are you so tight? And the wisdom of your body will give you the answer. And then pay attention to what follows. Remember, you'll be invited to work with the elements of nature to bring in a balance. So whether it's water, whether it's air, whether it's earth, or whether it's fire, pay attention to that. So fire, an example could be you're being invited to go sit in the sun for a little bit and get some sunlight. If it is air, perhaps you're being invited to go into the mountains and get some fresh air or go outside and get some fresh air, leave your house and go get some fresh air. If it is water, perhaps you're being invited to drink more water, right? Or to go to a river or a water body and swim in it or just take in, be in that energy, right? If it is earth, perhaps you're being invited to go work on your garden or go um, walk barefoot Uh, in the grass or go in the mountain, go hiking, go connect to nature, right? So pay attention to what else, what steps you're being invited to take in order to bring you back in balance. That's very important. So that's a little bit about this week, and I'm excited. Um, This week's messages is very interesting because there's two different messages that came in on top of working with the goddess um, for this week. So we are working with with two messages today on top of, you know, the goddess message. So um, you're going to be, you're going to receive an archetype that you're gonna be working with this week who's gonna help you move from that um, contraction or restriction energy into flow, you know, or wherever you are into the balance form. And then you're gonna be receiving a higher message to support you through the week. And of course, you're gonna be working, we're all gonna be working with a divine feminine energy um, to guide us through this week, right? So let's go ahead and begin. If you haven't yet, go ahead and close your eyes, taking a deep breath in. Get centered in your body. Use every breath to bring you deeper and deeper into your body. And then go ahead and call in your higher self to come in within you now. Go ahead and call in your Holy Spirit self to come in within you as well. Taking a deep breath in and out. Good. Now ask your guides, which of these messages is for my highest good? Which of these messages is for me? One, two, or three. 
open up to receive the number or numbers. And once you receive it, go ahead and open your eyes, fully open, fully present to receive your message. So let's go ahead and begin with the message from the goddess. And I went ahead and pulled the goddess. So the divine feminine presence that we're going to be working with this week is Akilanda. Akilanda. Look at this. Very transformational, fiery. And it says, the goddess of never not broken. And the mantra or affirmation is, everything happens for my liberation. I choose to become only more love. Here's the card again. Powerful card. Let's see what the message is for us. So at first, a little bit about Akilanda. So she represents the essence of the phoenix. She's the indestructible energy that embraces change. She knows that everything is conspiring to transform her into only more love and light. Akilanda is an elusive goddess from Hindu mythology. Her full name is Akilandeshvari. Akilandeshvari. Oh my gosh. Ishvari in Sanskrit means female power or goddess. And Akilanda means never not broken. So she is the goddess of never not broken. She can never be broken because she, she always is. She is the embodiment of what we try to avoid. The dissolution of our ego's identity. Her power is unparalleled. She radiates the potent light and joy, thus the goal of change, transformation, or pain. There is very little written about her. She is meant to be known through experience. She is an intimate, interior goddess that we meet when we are in the darkest moments of grief and heartbreak. She shows us where our energy is trapped, where we have been stifled in routines or others' expectations of us. And she whispers the liberation we will experience once we let ourselves break open and allow the new expression of ourself to come blazing through. Mm. She reminds us that we always have the power to choose to see every event as yet another opportunity to become more light, to become more of the radiant soul that we are here to be. And here's her message for us. Many of us exert tremendous energy in the effort to not break or fall apart. We resist our grief, our heartbreak, or we deny the need to change until the choice no longer feels like it's ours. Something sideswipes, sides, sideswipes us in our ordinary life and shatters who we think we are and how we identify ourselves. Here's what Akilanda reminds us. Vulnerability is our greatest strength. Vulnerability is our greatest strength. If we are always broken, we can never break. Oh, this is some deep wisdom. Vulnerability is our greatest strength. If we are always broken, then we can never break. Akilanda is the most intimate and personally powerful goddess because she meets us in those moments when we can feel most alone, most exposed, and most afraid. She models how to thrive in the midst of change. She uses pain to joyfully and purposely transform. She sees everything as an opportunity to release what isn't serving her. And she knows that being broken isn't a failure or something we should avoid. It actually, it's actually the whole point. We are here to let our ideas of ourselves go up in flames so that beneath the ashes, the soft core of who we truly are arises. 
And so that we remember that it's not the heart that ever breaks, it's the ego. The heart only ever expands. The heart only ever expands. So here's her question for us this week. What heartbreak can you see now as an opportunity to expand? What heartbreak can you see now as an opportunity to expand? And here's the mantra affirmation to work with this week. Everything happens for my liberation. I choose to become only more love. Everything happens for my liberation. I choose to become only more love. Thank you, Akilanda, beautiful goddess, for this message. Powerful, powerful message. I feel like it's so needed for us, right? Um, so the energy of the phoenix is very activated this week, right? Um, with the full moon energy really helping us to do some big release here burn away the, the false identities, the, the things that are holding us back, preventing us from actually expanding, right? So I'm really excited. Now let's go ahead and dive into the unique messages, okay? So if you were drawn to card number one, let's see here, one, two, and three, okay. And then the archetypes. Let me just make sure I have all of it. That's one, two, and three. Okay. So if you're drawn to card number one, this is your card for the week. So it says no. And look at how intense this card is. Right? It says no. And the card says wait, postpone, pause and say no. And before I read the message, I want to show you the archetype that you are working with for this week with this card, which is so perfect for this card is the honorable warrior. And again, do you see the lightning in that picture? So we'll come back to this in a moment. So let's go ahead and read the message for card number one. You are being called to either pause or say no. Saying yes to something isn't in, that isn't in alignment with you will drain your energy and your time. Hold out for a congruent aligned 100% yes. Often when we are looking for guidance to make a decision, it can be frustrating not to move into clear and considered action. However, timing is everything and not receiving clear guidance is actually guidance in itself. Ooh, yeah. Well, all, we all go through times known as waiting periods and these times are crucial for our body to regenerate the new path to formulate and the universe to begin creating things on our behalf. You don't need to be plowing forward all the time to move forward. A potent congruent yes, when the time is right, will put you ahead leaps and bounds. Don't force things now, just because it seems like the only option. Take a breather and wait. The waiting is actually very productive for when the time for movement comes, you will be ready to dive right in. Use this time to regenerate and ponder what you truly want. Consider the options. If the options are not clear, don't fear, because this time is a gift. Use it to tend to your garden and take a rest. To take a moment from your busy life to clear the desk, decks and prepare for the time in the future. For come spring, clarity will bloom and you will have the reserves, space, and drive to say yes and act and move quickly. So again, if you're drawn to card number one, you're being invited to say no, to postpone, or to wait. And now let's move into the archetype that you're working with who's going to help you to do this. And again, we have the same theme of the lightning. 
This is the archetype, the honorable warrior. This archetype represents, you know, being brave, courageous, strong, passionate, bold, hardworking, territorial, athletic, competitive, decisive, heroic, loyal, disciplined, action-driven. As an honorable warrior, you are strong, brave, passionate, hardworking, loyal, action-oriented, spiritual warrior who is guided by a higher power. So the sole purpose, the sole desire of this archetype that is being activated within you this week is to pursue personal excellence and world change through courageous acts. And the purpose is to stand for honorable causes and be an agent for positive change. The mantra that comes with this um, with this archetype is I stand for positive change. So what I'm getting with these two, the first card says, make sure you, the, the reason why the answers are not clear is because this is a time period that you need to stop. You need to wait and you need to take a breather because there's something bigger being orchestrated underneath, right? And the courageous or the honorable warriors coming in to kind of teach you how to channel the energy, like come spring, how to channel. Oh, I need water. Hold on. So what I'm getting is that the honorable warrior is coming in to really give you the power that you need to say no to the things that drain your energy and to have the courage to pause, to take a break, to take a breather, until you get a, a clear yes, like an all body yes. And then you can move forward, right? And um, when it's time to move forward, you will have the energy, the power, the drive to do that. So that's what I'm getting from card number one. And again, here's your card. Again, the lightning showing. No, it's a big no. Take a breather. Calm down. <laughs> and then you have the warrior also and this time holding the lightning so that's you you're the aspect of yourself that is coming in this week to help you so let's go ahead and move to card number two if you're drawn to card number two your card is protection so this week is all about protection i love the action that all the women in the card um, have it's very powerful and it says call back your power cut the cords and it's time for soul retrieval so this is going to be a potent week for you right with a full moon so here's the message and before i do that let me show you the archetype card that you're working with you are working with the mystic perfect card right yeah we'll come back to that protection card number two Here's your message. You are being called to protect your energy and call back your power. May all the lost pieces return home now. Take a look at who and what drains your energy. Do not keep your tabs open. Shut down energetically each night. Energetic cords are formed between people, places, objects, and events. So it's important to keep checking in. Your energy and energetic space are sacred, so treat them as such. Keeping your energy clear takes work. As we go through life, we can give away our power, so it is important that we call it back by cutting energetic cords or doing a form of healing known as soul retrieval. Can you think of a traumatic event, relationship, or soul memory that you are being called to call back your power from? Check into your body now and see which chakra feels like it needs a bit of an energetic cleanup. So we'll go ahead and do the light activation with the uh, meditation at the end. So we'll come back to that. Now let's go to the archetype who's going to be helping you this week to do that. So again, this is the mystic. 
The mystic is spiritual, sensitive, unconventional, transcendent, intuitive, introverted, illuminating, artistic, ingenious, intense, imaginative, and innovative, relinquishing, revolutionary, rebellious, and mysterious. The sole desire of the mystic, of this part of yourself that you're working with this week, is to be a channel for transcending the material world. And the purpose of this archetype is to bridge the spiritual and the material worlds to create true freedom for yourself and humanity. The mantra that you're working with, with this archetype, is I am spiritually wealthy. I am spiritually wealthy. So the mystic really um, is dedicated is dedicated to the path of enlightenment. The mystic's primary purpose is to bridge the spiritual and the material, material worlds, discover the deeper meaning in life, and experience true freedom. So in this case, this archetype is coming in to really help you to discover all the pieces that you have given away or lost so that, and also to help you bring it all together so that you can discover who you are with all those pieces of yourself back together again. So I love this message for you. So again, if you're drawn to card number two, you are in protection mode this week um, with the full moon energy. You're going to be identifying how you are losing your energy, how you are, um, your energies are being leaked out um, and you're going to be shown how you can replenish that energy and seal your energy field. So, um, and then the soul retrieval aspect of this, once you've sealed your energy, you can call all those aspects of you. Um, you can retrieve those aspects of your soul, the pieces of your soul, back to you so you can return back into wholeness and you can gain wisdom through that retrieval. It's powerful work. So you are in for a treat and we're going to do the, the activation with the meditation at the end. So stay tuned. So if you were drawn to card number three, your card is, your message is this, get grounded so this week for you, you're being asked to get grounded. Look how powerful this card is. So it says, empaths, highly sensitives, connect with nature. Empaths, highly sensitives, connect with nature. Before I move into the message, the archetype that you're working with is the collaborator. And we'll come back to this. So here's the message. You are being called to get grounded, to ensure that your luminous field is clear and your inner well is full. Ooh, I feel like this is my card. <laughs> I've been getting this message all weekend to fill my well again, to fill myself up again. So this is definitely my card. If you're not grounded, it is all too easy to get swept up in other people's energy and mistake it for your own. Your boundaries will become blurred as you are absorbing the energies around you and struggling to define what is their stuff and what is yours. If you, if you receive this card, you are very likely an empath or a highly sensitive person and need time alone to fill up your well, balance your energy and get grounded. There are two types of people, those who draw the energy from others, which they usually called energy vampires, and those who draw the energy from within. That's the healthy one. Reflect on which one you are and carve up time each day to ensure your well is being replenished. Being sensitive is a superpower. But like all powers, it needs to be nurtured in order to be fulfilled. It is easy to get swept up in the high frequency energies that are swirling around the planet at this time. The quickest and most effective way of clearing all of this from your field is to ground yourself. 
by connecting with Mother Earth. There are many ways to get grounded. One of the most powerful ones is to practice earthing by connecting to the power of Mother Earth. Spend time in nature. Put your hands on a tree. Your palms are extensions of your heart chakra. Or walk barefoot on the earth. Beautiful message. And so you're being asked to do something to get grounded and connect with the earth this week. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. So let's dive into the archetype who's going to be assisting you this week. And we get the collaborator. You can see that. And the collaborator, of course, is cooperative, receptive, connective, supportive, curious, empathic. Responsible, insightful, accepting, inclusive, reliable, and co-creative. The sole desire of this archetype is to use the is to use the unique genius in connection with others to actualize a vision or goal. The purpose of this archetype is to create greater good for the global community through authentic partnership. And the mantra that comes with this working with this archetype this week is I co-create to create. It's very interesting. So this archetype is coming in to show the, the state, what is how to connect those two. It's showing you the state that you're currently in or that you're being asked to step into. Um, if you're not collaborating with others, perhaps that is how you are losing energy. That is how you are repleting your energy by trying to do everything yourself, right? You're being asked to get grounded and through that, um, connecting to nature, um, through that groundedness, you can get clarity in order to move forward, if that makes sense. Once you receive clarity, once you are grounded in yourself, then you can see the path to which to create whatever it is that you are working on. But the other aspect of this is that your path involves working with others to achieve a greater purpose. That is the collaborator. So I'm really excited to see how this archetype is really going to be shining this week for you as you ground yourself, as you take some time to breathe and connect to the earth, walk barefoot, go on a hike, touch the trees, like do whatever you need to get grounded. That is very important, especially as we continue to receive the high energies in. So if you're drawn to card number three, you're being asked this week to get grounded and you're working with the collaborator archetype after you're grounded to achieve your purpose. All right, so let's go, let's just go ahead and go back to, yeah, I think I covered all of it, beautiful. So let's go ahead and just end this forecast with a meditation and then i will share with you the activation that came with the protection i feel like um that's the second card and i feel like that will benefit every single person this week um so go ahead and close your eyes taking some deep breaths in Get centered. Bring your awareness to your forehead where you see a beautiful ball of light and drop that light into your heart space. And see, sense of feel, a beautiful pillow of light coming down from above, entering your crown, going through your head, your neck, and in your chest, it anchors within your heart and expands into a beautiful bubble of light around you. Allow the pillow of light to continue down your body, through your hips, through your legs, out the bottom of your feet into the earth. Allow it to go through all the different layers of the earth. Let it ground into Mother Gaia. Feel yourself held and anchored into Mother Gaia. Breathe. from this point we're going to call in a higher self to come and join in 
I'm going to call in the angels to come and assist, the archangels to come and assist, and any other divine beings who are assigned to you to help you through this process. So what I'm going to invite you to do is to see, sense, or feel your higher self standing with you. Bring your awareness back into your heart space. And there you notice that you stand in with your higher self. An elevator emerges in front of you. And the door opens and your higher self enters the elevator with you. It's like this beautiful bright golden elevator. And your higher self presses the number seven, which is the highest you can go. At this point, that is. The elevator door closes and you begin to ascend. Three, four, taking a deep breath in. Five, noticing that as you go higher, there's like a, a pour, a, this light, bright light pouring into the elevator. Six and seven, ding. The elevator door opens and you emerge into this pure white room. And at the center of the room is like this area where there's a waterfall of source light. And at the bottom or um, at the bottom, you see like a seat prepared for you. And your higher self motions you to go sit underneath this waterfall of light. So you walk over there to the center of the source room or God room and you have a seat and you look up and you notice that the light that is pouring down onto you is coming down from the divine as pure source light undiluted source light so with your breath go ahead and open every single part of your body every cell every muscle every artery every organ Open yourself up completely to drink up this source light. Fill your cup. Fill your well. Get replenished. Heal. Get aligned. Create a protection here with the source light. Whatever it is that you're being called to do, whatever it is that you are being asked to do, go ahead and do that now with your higher self assisting you. And what I'm I'm getting this that your team, your divine team shows up and they create this beautiful circle around you just holding space for you. Now this time just go ahead and taking a deep breath in and just take in this light and I'm just going to get quiet here so you can just breathe in this space and continue to drink up the source light pouring upon you. in front of you and touches your energy field and immediately it looks like an x-ray where the chakras or your energy centers that are blocked are projected forward in front of you go ahead and take a look at which energy centers are blocked so it could be your third eye it could be your throat it could be your heart it could be your roots it could be your sacral your crown which energy centers are blocked at this time. And at this time, your higher self touches each of the energy centers as you receive this activation to unblock those energy centers. And as I'm saying this activation, imagine that source light beaming into each of your energy center on blocking them and activating them back into flow. Taking a deep breath in here and out. I call back any lost soul fragments, 
power all light now. Any vows, soul contracts, hexes or programs from the past or present, from this life or others that are not in the highest good of all, I relinquish now. Any power or light that I have willingly or unwillingly given away or had taken from me, I call back now. Any cords or attachments from this life or others, I release now for the highest good of all. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. I'm going to read this again. Okay. Again, bring your awareness to your the energy centers that are blocked. I call back any lost soul fragment, power, or light, now. I call back any lost soul fragment, power, or light, now. Any vows, soul contracts, hexes, or programs from the past or present, from this life or others that are not in the highest good of all, I relinquish now. Any power or light that I have willingly or unwillingly given away or had taken from me, I call back now. Any cords or attachments from this life or others, I release now for the highest good of all. And so it is, and so it is, and so it is. Taking a deep breath in here and out. It is so. Imagine, see, sense, or feel each of those energy centers fully activated, spinning, filled with light. Feel all parts of you return back to you. Breathe. Beautiful. Thank you, higher self. Thank you, angels, divine guides. Thank you, Divine Father, Divine Mother, for this beautiful activation and for this alignment. We thank you for this and we thank you for all things. So be it and so it is. So go ahead and stand back up again, walking with your higher self back to the elevator. The door opens, you enter. Your higher self presses the elevator back to the main floor where you were. And the elevator begins to descend. And as you descend, you're pulling in all that energy, all that blessing you received, all that light you received. You're bringing it all down into your physical reality, into the third dimension. Six, five, feeling strong, feeling whole feeling joyful, coming back to self. Four, three, feeling good, feeling great. Two, one, be here now, fully activated. Stronger than ever. So be it and so it is. Breathe in with your exhale. Come back to the here and now. Welcome. So thank you for receiving this week's Goddess Energy Forecast. It was a pretty intense one. There's a lot of messages that came through. So I want to hear from you. How did this resonate with you? Um, and let me know what questions came up. Um, how was the aligning your chakras and calling back your power? How was that process like for you? What did you see? What did you feel? I would love to hear from you. If you haven't joined my free group yet, the Moon Goddess Sacred Sanctum, make sure you do so. And then that way you can pop in and share your experiences with me. Um, and then we can all support you through your the transformative journey that you're going through. So thank you so much. And I... I am hoping for a blessed week for you. So much blessings to you. Bye, everyone.